evening, ladies and gents, to the MBS show. He is your dear and favorite host, Norman Sanzo. Joining him today is a filly who has been with us long, our very one and only Sapphire Heart Song. And this one has a beak, though not a duck's bill. He is instead the fun hippogriff, known as Silver Quill. And finally you have me, the last in this reviewer bin, your astounding and humble narrator, the great Will I Zin. Our comic today is about the baddest of moods, and how spreading them is totally not radical, dudes. But before we begin our tale of morality lessons, it's time instead for our own first impressions. Get off the stage! Yay! Golf claps. Oh, <laughs> well, if we did the rest of the review like that in rhyme, I just don't think we would have the time. Oh, I just wish I can do that rhyme because I ain't no rapper, yo. Well, we can, man. We'll just take some candy and put something around you. Then you'll be a rapper, all right. <laughs> oh, but anywho, yo, me. Uh, uh, Silver, please do host. I shall try. So after that marvelous introduction, it could be somewhat intimidating, but we shall do our best. And now it is time for first impressions. And so, Norman, it's t- you impress me. Uh, this one. This is a. I didn't rhyme. <laughs> okay, rhyme police. But anywho, this one, this comic is a really surprising one. I didn't watch any spoilers for it, but upon the first page, Zakura appears and. I am going to have fun in this one. Literally, this comic is done in rhymes. And I have a great time reading this comic. And what can I say? The art by Andy Price is way different from what he usually does. And the coloring by, I think, one had a Breckel, was it? Art by Andy Price, I think he did his own color. Yep. I'm sorry, no, no head of this time. But this issue is amazing in terms of art, writing, color. It's top notch in terms of what you expect from a perfect comic book by the Andy Price and Katie Cook combo. This is one of them. And I like it really much. And well, I, I want to say more, but since this is first impressions, my first impression is wow, we. And Pass it on to the next person. The next person is Sapphire, who probably won't go long, but we really want to know, what do you think, Sapphire Heart Song? I did enjoy this comic, even though I kind of skimmed it for like five minutes. I won't be rhyming, I'm sorry, I'm not that creative, but, uh, <laughs> how do I I'm pretty sure that? this comic left you very elative. Okay, I'll let Will do all my rhyming for me from now on. Okay, how about that? So... <laughs> This comic had a nice touch of Dr. Seuss into it. It had really nice artwork, although I'm very mu- I'm, I'm scared of Rainbow Dash now. That, that one face will be in my nightmares, but I won't spoil it. I liked it, even though it was a five minute skim. Alrighty. And now we go to our announcer, who's had, who's done rhymings by the Phil. That's the best rhyme I could think of. What do you think, dear Will? Come on, man. I mean, there's Bill, there's Gil, there's Sill, there's Trill, there's Nil, there's Phil, G- uh, Hill. Uh, I mean, jeez, come on, man. It's one of the most random. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll go well, easy here, on you. Okay? Here, here's, here's your bill for my dignity. Now pay up. <laughs> well, only three bucks. Cheap. <laughs> Economy hit you hard. Okay, my first impressions of this comic. Uh, also what Norman said beautiful coloring. In fact, it looks like they don't do the same type of coloring on each page. Like, it's a new style of coloring from watercolors to acrylics to uh, a bit of charcoal and uh, crayon and marker. It's just mm, so storybooky, Just like out of something out of a children's storybook you'd read, like Jack and the Bo- Giant Beanstalk or something like that. And, as for the story, you know... Seuss. Oh yeah, or Dr. Seuss. Yes. Well, actually, Seuss used very hard colors and... Uh, uh, cell shading if I, well, not cell oh, yeah, shading but specifically, but, uh. It feels like a Dr. Seuss novel. Yeah. First impressions of this whole comic. Very enjoyable, very lighthearted, and silly. And there you go. And it's for you, Silver. 
Oh, I had such delight with this one. I mean, it, it's fun. It's quick read, but the but the funny thing is, there is so much artwork and so much activity. You just want to see. You want to go back and read again just to see all the people, all the ponies, and what they had to go through. You know, you spot who's in the crowd, what's going on, what do the signs say, what do the books say. It's very, very impressive, and I do so enjoy it. Price uh, loves his details. Oh, yes. Price is king of putting in the little background references. But also just you tell he's having a lot of fun with this. Anyway, so... Okay. It's time to hit, get into the spoilers. <laughs> so if you haven't read this comic, why not? Indeed, this is a good one. So here we go. Hip deep spoilers. Got no one to blame but yourself. As and so the story goes that everyone's got some bad days. It happens to you and me. They even hit our heroines like a multi-hued pony. It might start out well enough, but Dashie's day soon dashed. She's off to buy a brand new book, and then her face gets smashed. Uh. What can I say? Starting from the intro, page one, we are bombarded by reference. Reference after reference. The most notable one here is um, the Rose in the Jar, referencing Beauty and the Beast. Yay! And, oh, before that, we got Zakura. Zakura in all her zebra pride. Yay! But there's a wall up there, sitting on a cloud. And also there's Zakura. She must be very proud. Uh, it's the witch. She created said wall. So she's sitting on a cloud. And she's not a Pegasus. Oh, wait. Zero out of ten. Unsubscribe. Worst comic ever. Oh, no. We have to mention the elephant out of the bag. Or oh, elephant in the room. Is the plot of this is Rainbow Dash is having a bad day. And said bad day manifests itself into this cloud of darkness. It's gloom, gloomy thing where it infects another person and this is the story where every bad mood or every rotten thing you do infects the other or affects the other person like here in one example is rainbow dash being really rude to one of the construction ponies which is actually a nerf pony if you look at it wow how Negative 100 out of 10, 0 out of 30, worst comic ever. Oh, he's just he's just wearing special horseshoes that allow him to walk on clouds and do construction. I can subscribe to that. Yeah. Maybe he's half Pegasus. Mm-hmm. On his mother's side. Oh, yes. would that be something? Mm-hmm. Might I knew, Silva? Well, from there, the route's downhill. Dashi's got an awful mood. Sakura calls them dreary's, but they're not an evil brood. The dreary's are an attitude that's spread far across Equestria. That might start off weak and small, but work up to Celestia. Yeah, so these juries basically, uh, first I was thinking, you know, what, are they some sort of disease? Like they spread from pony to pony, but then it's more so like, uh, effect that, uh, the ponies themselves generate with their bad moods. So, let's get this straight. The Wendigos feed on the, you know, fear and disharmony, and now we got juries, which basically feed off of, uh, anger. It must suck to emote in Equestria. Your emotions can either cause, you know, you to spread joy to other people's, or it can cause your entire civilization to crumble. Uh, but I don't think it's feeding. It's manifesting more like it. I can believe that. But it is fun just to see how each each pony uh is infected and how it influences. What Applejack could possibly do to give Luna the raspberry is beyond me. Oh, uh, they're on their date, and Luna or Applejack said something wrong. It's just that. Even Celeste using that, though. That's actually kind of nice to see. <laughs> As girls, it is. And, well, with Rainbow Dash's anger penting up, uh, it can't be, it can't end well, Silver. Anyway, I can't, I can't write these on the fly, so we're just going straight forward. <laughs> So, basically, Zakora has the grand plan of a sacrificial lamb. What? When? When was that? Well, she takes a Taurus named Tank, who's quite a lovable guy. She pushes him into Rainbow's flank, and then he starts to cry. Oh, yeah, because of the... Yeah. yeah. Well, he doesn't cry because he's pushed into Rainbow's flank. I'm pretty sure if anyone was pushed into Rainbow's flank, they would be crying tears of joy. <laughs> uh... It's... 
every fat boy's dream. <laughs> no, but I thought every fat boy's dream was to live in a house full of chocolate. Oh God, no. No, that's pure <laughs> Safi. Well, that's my dream. Oh God, no. Yeah, so, but okay, that was that was strangely specific. <laughs> I guess we could just say, she's got a dream, she's got a dream, she's got a dream, she's got a dream. I've got a dream, I've got a dream. With Tank bumping into Rainbow Dash's flank, oh, that rhymes, um, Tank starts to wail. And oh, this, Andy Price really knows how to get you in the guts. Yep. Mm. He's insidious like that. Yes, Rainbow has a wake up. She knows she's been a thug. She starts to make amends. By giving Tank a hug. Yeah. No. Oh, and it's a group hug too. Although it looks like Rarity's getting choked somehow. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's not getting the choke. If you take a look, see Pinkie Pie is using her mean as a towel to wipe off the tears. A true friendship. Yep, indeedy. <laughs> My little pony. Friendship is convenient. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but. Uh... I'll get back to this when I can remember it, but this scene here... Oh. Well, the stories go, it's pretty small. No push for twist nor turn. The focus, not the characters, but the lessons ponies learn. Indeedy. Indeedy. Yeah. So, let, okay, what's your favorite group to reconcile? I'd have to say probably uh, Apple Bloom being nice to Cranky, just because, dang it, girl, respect your elders. I'm always happy to see the return of Shining Armor's troop. Yay! Although, again, I, I think we've... I mean, anyone who's done D&D has always had the case where the GM just decides to be an absolute doingus. Yeah. Yep. One of those. Oh, are you kidding? I, oh, just watch me play a game of Destiny in the in the player versus player matches. You'll see some hostility. Oh, uh, well, join us for Overwatch then. <laughs> oh, that, that oh, gets yeah. even worse. Oh, oh, you should join us for Overwatch Silver because we just have the worst luck of getting people and it's hilarious some of the people will get it's just like Terra Bad and the Ragers and the Salt you know what in fact I'm kind of wondering if there's a way to extract the salt from half the players because <laughs> then we could just you know pave the roads here in Minnesota so much better in the winter <laughs> but enough of, so, uh, yes you can Yay! we can all, we can all, we can all do this Chinese and be an environmentalist while building a wall oh god although it, uh, it, are you guys on PlayStation or PC? PC Computer. Apparently, I just need to invest in a gaming rig. That's the only way I'm going to get to connect to most people. Indeed. But, hey, that's... Well, do, be- do one better. Invest yourself in a computer that can do super rendering for your videos. I did already. And even then, it's not super. Well, what, did I you mean... get a Mac? Did you get a Mac? Ah! Yes. Oh, yes. There's uh, a problem. You got a Mac. That, ah! that is a conversation for another day. So... Um, Will says he We're likes. Way off yeah. topic. Will says he's like Apple <laughs> well, Bloom and Cranky. Um, Seppi, what about you? I think my favorite uh, reconciliation was definitely the, um, you know, the dungeons and. Uh, yeah, it seemed like silver then. Yeah, I know that's not the term, but that is my favorite part. Right. Like I, I don't know. Like seeing nerds fight, only have them make up with all their bromanceness. It's <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> As for me, I'll go for Derpy because you can never go wrong with Derpy. Sure, Norman, why not? <laughs> well, it's true. It's there. She has a box of muffins. I thought the weirdest reconciliation is the end page where everyone's uh, hugging it out to the Blues Brothers. Yeah. Don't you know, like, there's a song to it, remember? Everybody needs somebody sometime. True that. It's not what I really expect from the Blues Brothers. But it's at the bo- bottom right corner of that panel. Big Mac and sweet cream scoops. Oh, that is that is one of the OTPs that Andy is really, really trying to push. Well, mostly it's been Big Mac running away from her. She makes very pro- provocative winks at him, and yet now suddenly they're they're licking the same ice cream. It's getting a little, ooh, getting a little tongue tied. Oh my, I don't see Charlie around. Yeah, they're just they're just sharing some they're just sharing some nice platonic ice oh, cream. Oh, by the way, nothing to think about. Oh, by the way, for you shippers out there, Apple Bloom and Sweetie Bell are sharing a shake together. Yeah, uh, I see. I think Bloom and ba- Scootaloo. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad, sorry. Yeah, I think the better ship is obviously Maud has met Tom. 
ends for the ship that will never sink, Spike giving chocolates to Rarity, sans a few pieces. Yes, indeed. Uh, oh, but you know what? As every man should. But you know what? I, I think with Big Mac and... Um, what's her name again, Silver? Sweet Cream Scoops. Yeah, Sweet Cream. I think Cadence had something to do with it. Oh, great. oh we're back to the love spell. <laughs> really, Norman. Really, Norman. I, you're, you are just like Starlight Glimmer. You're looking for the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, if we're if if we wouldn't mind bringing some of the uh, the uh, notice to the little de- details in the books, I have to say my favorite book of all these ones that are here is the one Sweetie Belle is giving to Snowflake of Daring Do and the Curse of Light Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Daring do in the ticket sign. Yes. Daring do in the lost opos- possum drive. Daring do in the great fashion crusade. Oh, uh, oh in the... this one's my favorite. Daring do in the quest for the broccoli casserole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite is um, original, original. Daring do soundtrack. <laughs> Daring do in the great ball of has. yarn. Daring do in the great ball of yarn for me. Yeah. Daring do <laughs> and the uh, gamester of Triskeleton? Triskeleton? Tanks in on that one. I think he. Uh, I think he wants to join game night. Uh, yeah, he, uh-huh. they should do it, man. Although to what you were saying about daring do and the great ball of yarn, definitely a scene from Indiana Jones yeah. with the boulder, only with a giant thing of yarn. Da 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 da. da. Oh, by the way, we we are <laughs> missing on the bottom right. Where I think those were comedian ponies. I'm not getting the reference. Who are they? Oh, what the hippie, the hippie no, no, no. ponies? No, yeah, they're next, from uh, the uh, rarity. No, um, no, no, not that, not that. It's next to Zakura. Next to Zakura. Oh, oh, the three stooges on the bottom right. I think that's Larry Curly and Mo. Really? Yes, yeah, yeah because they're Larry chasing Curly and Mo. the pony with the mustache. They're chasing the duck. Like, is that the three stooges? I thought the three stooges, but some of the classic comedian. Oh, 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 sorry, the Marx yeah. Brothers. Which I'm, I'm seeing Three Stooges, it's the Marx Brothers. And they're chasing a duck, so it's duck soup. Uh, well, now I'm disappointed. I was expecting Larry, Curly, and Moe, and somebody picking somebody's eyes out. No, it's the Marx uh-huh. Brothers, Groucho, Marco, and Chicho. No, it? I don't even want to hear it. You've disappointed me. Uh, well, oh. well that happens when you're young, yeah. as you get older. You get used to it. Yeah, you get to learn with disappointment. Yeah. And you expect it. <laughs> yeah. All of this is brought up because Akura called Pinky a quack. What? <laughs> Let's not bring ducks into this. Hey Silver, aren't aren't you aren't you like one uh one eighth duck? Are you I'm three point seven six. Uh, uh, the rest of this chicken. I thought it was pigeon. It's it's many things, baby. My family's all about the love and the diversity. Oh yeah. Hey, wait, wait. Next page. Okay. Next page. Next page. Oh yeah. Too much information. Too much information. So the next page. Next page is the end. Not really, because yeah. we see everybody holding hands and singing songs, and we have we see the pets hanging about doing their thing, and including Philomena and Tobias. Tiberius. Tiberius. So thank you. Tiberius. That's cool. I like this scene. Yeah, and apparently Rarity's cat is making off with a whole slice of pizza. Dang, that cat's got a gut. Every 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 lady has her indulgence. I would yeah. know. And somehow Spike pops out of a tin of peanut butter. Yeah. Oh well. Well, it, the the peanut butter was there. Hmm. Although I'm questioning Spike's Bologna rhyme. Bologna. Bel- no, below. Oh, but it's Bologna. It, Bologna. It in, yeah, it, in, it ends with an A, so I gotta say it's Bologna. Yeah. Well, Did it's actually say- Bologna. It's uh, it, one of the pronunciations is Bologna because it's to rhyme with pony. That is true. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, there you it's, go. It's a tomato, but... tomato. It's a tomato, tomato situation. <laughs> okay. Okay. I need to throw the gauntlet on this. Homage or homage? <laughs> Either or. Homage. 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 Homage, 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 and bipartisan bastard. I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> how do you say either, either or either? Either. Either. 
either. Well, it depends on the it it depends on the sentence, but yeah, usually I say either. Mm. Oh God. Uh, anywho. Uh, no, come on. We've got we've got a petty competition going. Let's milk this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. yeah all right. All right. Good. But what can, what can we say? I mean, really, the story is basically done. More or less. Yeah. Or is it? Oh. Yes, because one dreary survives. Ba ba ba. Yeah, it's the it's the poor construction worker. Yeah, who's been working all day while everyone else reads books. I'd be pissed too. Yeah, and he didn't get yeah. a formal apology from Rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. actually uh, one of the one, on one of the final pages, I do have to say, we get to finally see what Zakora's Daring Do book is, and it's Daring Do in the Lost World that rhymes with orange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, truly, the greatest terror of them all. Yes, entirely. So or, or, or the, or the, or the lost world uh, named after purple oh, God. or silver. Ah, ah, ah. But in all honesty, um, that's the end. That's the end. So let's go for for some final impressions, mm-hmm. shall we? I, I. So, Safi, oh, your closing, me. your closing thoughts. The art is nice, the Dr. Sue reference is nice, this comic is nice. Will? I have to say, I love the storybook feel to it, I love the coloring, and it was just cute and adorable. Just a, a nice little fluffery. Definitely, some, this is actually, you know, if I ever have kids, this is definitely the sort of uh, storybook I'd definitely read to them. But since I have a niece, I'll have to spoil her instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And Norman? Well, like I mentioned before, I like the art, I like the coloring, I like the story. And one of the th- few things that I do enjoy out of Andy Price's work here is that the way he does his work is full, of, chock full of detail. And with this comic here especially, there's, there is a lot to see, there's a lot to ponder. They're, they're, reading it once is not enough. I feel that if you read this a few times, you'll always discover something new in what is in the background, in the way it's written, and just chock full of reference. Like, we didn't even mention the map of Ponyville, which is um, styled like the classic Disney map. Or we didn't really talk about the blotch, uh, color blotch that he used with um, one of the scenes where the ponies were waiting in line because you have one circle, you have one color splosh that looks like the Star Trek logo or emblem and you have a basic square so all those things are there and not to mention that he is in the comic as his pony OC so as this it, is one of the few things that sorry as is Katie Cook they're arguing with one another yeah and what's let me see uh, yeah they're, they're arguing about the script <laughs> funny enough but the other thing that I do like about this comic is the lesson the lesson here is that no matter how foul of a mood you are, don't take it out on another person because that might start a chain reaction of bad moods. No matter what it is, just try to control yourself and be a nice person because one good deed will make the world of a difference. Very well done. So, all good? Yep, yep. All right. What about Will? Did he give us a... Yep, yep, he did. Oh, okay. No, did. Silver. Ah, me, yes. Well, the stories go is pretty small. No push for twist nor turn. Like I say, the focus, not the characters, but the lessons ponies learn. This comic's all about style. Best I've seen in ages. <laughs> Three different looks from Andy Price spread across 22 pages. From Cheerily by to Gaffer, it's ponies by the ton. A reread's on the list. The artwork's really fun. The humor is quite simple, from slapstick to fourth wall. The faces are the funniest, but in truth, I love it all. If story is your focus, this comic may fall short. Don't want a discomparable, just want a fair report. Reports. <laughs> the tale is real simple, but sometimes that's the best. One thing that surprised me, that reference Adam West. Okay, where? Where? Last page. The, the closing caption. Oh, yeah. Same pony time, same pony chat. Oh, Ooh, maybe Batgirl can swoop in and to demand equal pay while they're strapped to a bomb. 
Oh, honestly, Silva, I need to send you a Sherry link to that Batman movie I saw with the Adam West Batman. Really, it's really awesome. Well, is that the one where he has the shark repellent bat spray? Not that one. I'm talking about the animated version movie. Are we, is that, wait, is this the, the how it should have ended? No, 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 no. This is, um, DC created a Batman, a 60s Batman animated movie starring Adam West and his sidekick, uh, Robin. Um, I forgot his name. Sorry about that. And the original Catwoman. Wow. Yes. Trust me. It's a really good watch. I need to send you the sending, uh, sharing link later. But anywho. Anywho. Admittedly, this is a shorter review because this, this comic is just very straightforward. There's not a, there's not a lot of surprises or twists. You just enjoy the ride and the rhymes and the arts. So, mm-hmm. so I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I think it's one of the best. Yeah. Heck, and I would suggest me, just picking up a physical copy just for the, the art alone. Just for the art alone. And, and to sign your name on the IDW comic book alongs too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And to me, this is, an Andy Price showcase where if you want to show someone, okay, how how good is Andy Price? This is the book. This is the book that you show someone that, hey, this is Andy Price's work. He is really good. Do you remember the Applejack and Rarity Micro? Yeah. A while uh-huh. back. The alternate cover where it's showing Applejack and Rarity in a bar where they dress up as, um, I forgot what's the... Rarity was a Rarity was a showgirl and Applejack a Wild West pony. Yes, that one. That to me was one of his best covers that I've seen and own. I even own a physical poster of it. So to me that is good. I even have one of his um originals where it's a derpy um colored. So Andy Price here is really awesome and this book showcases it. Not to overhype this comic, the next one will be Katie Cook's last work with IDW for the Pony Comics. Oh. And, well, this will be the last combo for the Katie Cook and the Price um, duo. Sad day. Yes, but still, um, issue 42 will be amazing when we review that in the far future. How, how far in the future? We'll have to wait until, well, Silver... What are we going to review next? Well, I believe it's time for a return to the episodes, yeah? Indeed. Well, let's see here. Then, let's see, let's see, let's see. Having recently covered every little thing she does... Is magic, magic, magic. <gasps> oh, now it's time for the multiple points Mystery of view. Skulls. Myst- mysteries abound, adorable animals, and pirate Applejack. yar <laughs> We be reviewing PPOV, Pony Points of View, on the MBS show. Oh, (laughs) Oh, gosh. This is going to be fun. I have a pony. I have a point. A (laughs) pony point of view. Oh, okay. I'm I'm happy again. Have you been unhappy, Miss Sapphire? What's what? You'll you'll know next episode. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, with that promise of things to come, I believe it's time we draw this podcast to a close. So, for the MBS show, I have been the Silver Quill. And I am your illustrious host with the mostest, Norman Senzo. I've been Sapphire Heart Song. Norman, you scare me. Why? I, I don't know. You just scare me today. And I have been Will, and thus here ends our segment of reviewing and silly jokes, and thus we are happy to have spent it with you lovely folks. We hope you've had some fun and enjoyed your stay, and we'll see you next time for another reviewing day. Adios. Thank you, Descartes Kane. Bye-bye. Goodbye. So who wants to play D&D now? Okay. Well, oh, I, I cast Fireball at the darkness. That the darkness turned out to be a gazebo. You've lit a gazebo on fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is the hot place to hang out. And Charlie Murphy. You're shot at the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>